The New Testament reading on this first Sunday of Advent is from the Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter. The context of the reading is the prediction by Jesus that the temple, the most sacred symbol of the people, was going to be destroyed, ended. And after that prediction, he continues with these words. Let us listen for the word of God. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear, from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that, day does, and, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A boy was 16 years old when his grandfather died. This boy's dad expected his son to be deeply saddened to lose his grandfather, and he was sad, for the teenager had been especially close to this grandfather. But, when the father did, but what the father did not expect was the astounding attention that this teenager started giving to him. Here this boy was at the stage in his life when he was making a very strong effort to be free of his dad, which is a normal thing for a 16-year-old. You probably know that. But now he was super attentive, seemingly wanting to be with his dad at every opportunity. For days after the grandfather's death, he kept asking his dad, how are you doing? What are you thinking? How are you going to make it through the funeral? It was strange. But the dad finally realized what was going on. This boy's whole world was coming apart. His world was a world in which he assumed his father would always be there. Be there to count on. Be there to struggle with, to argue with, wrestle with. Be there to keep him secure. Now, now watching his own father have to deal with giving up his father. It was vividly evident to this boy that someday, 
That world he counted on with his father always present would end. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. Nothing, nothing could put this boy's world back together again. At the temple in Jerusalem, Jesus looks at those grand buildings and he declares, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. When will this be? The crowd around him asks. And in response, Jesus goes on to give what we call his apocalyptic discourse. It is apocalyptic because it is revealing of what is to happen. That is what that word apocalypse means, a revealing. The destruction of the temple and of Jerusalem itself, it would happen under the boot of Roman troops around the year 70. It did happen. But what was going to happen to the temple, Jesus was saying, was all mixed up with what was really going on. And what was really going on was that the whole world, every world, was coming apart. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. Nothing was going to put the world back together again. Jesus was saying, all those worlds known in heaven and on earth would be over, ended forever. Now, believe it or not, this is the text that the church offers us for this first Sunday in Advent. In this season of the coming of light, the coming down of God to dwell with us, this wondrous time of awe and gift giving, what a word. We could ignore it. We often ignore parts of Scripture, don't we? We pick what we like leave out what we don't we could ignore it except the problem with ignoring it is that it is true Humpty Dumpty does get broken all the king's horses and all the king's men are not able to put Humpty Dumpty together again that 16 year old boy learned that we learned that our bodies start aching or become diseased, at least when you're my age, they do. And what we end up discovering is that what is really going on is that the world of our body is coming to an end. But we know it's bigger than that. Those people in that magnificent temple with Jesus, they could not imagine that the temple, the temple... And the security it gave them that God was always on their side. That that temple would vanish. Likewise with us. Can we imagine that the dear things to which we cling for security. This nation. Our standard of living. This what we call our church or even closer to us, our own family. Can we imagine that someday all of these will be no more? 
In fact, the very sun that makes life on this planet possible will burn out and crumble. We know that in our head, but in our heart, at the core of our being, Humpty Dumpty, all the king's horses, all the king's men, they are useless, useless. Every world we know and count on to always be there will crumble. And none of those worlds will be able to be put back together again. So why is this a text for Advent? This time when we anticipate the birth of Jesus, the breaking in of wonder and joy into the world. I believe we begin Advent with this vision of the end of things because what is really going on is not only that Jesus has come back there somewhere, but that Jesus is coming again, coming again to finally finish what Jesus started. As one scholar puts it, in the birth of a helpless baby in Bethlehem, a signal goes out that all the powers of the universe get notice that the days of their power are numbered. Those powers will come to an end, even those powers we cling to for life, like that temple, like our families, like our church, like our nation. But the last thing coming will not be the crumbling, the convulsion of these worlds. No. The last thing coming will be the Son of Man the fully human one, the resurrected Christ. He will come to reign over all things. Christ will come to finish what he started. Therefore stand up, Jesus says. Stand up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Jesus tells us, his disciples, when we see the worlds around us crumbling, to take that crumbling just like we take seeing the sprouts of leaves budding on the trees, budding in the springtime, just as surely as those budding leaves are a sign that summer is on the way. So the crumbling of the worlds we count on so are a sign that the kingdom of God is on the way. But that leaves us with a dilemma, doesn't it? For do we really want Christ to come again and finish what Christ started? Do we really want the worlds we know to end and a whole new world to begin? Do we want a new world where everything is under the reign of Christ, governed by Christ's justice, not ours, by Christ's love, not ours, by Christ's peace, not ours? When our world is so sweet, when our life is so good, do we want redemption, that is, freedom from the worlds we love and we have known? Do we truly pray for God's kingdom to come? Or rather, in all honesty, do we really pray for no advent of a new world? Have we in reality stopped waiting for, stopped yearning for Christ's coming? And as we have stopped that yearning, do we now fill our lives with worries about what we're going to wear or about what we're going to eat or about how we're going to retire? Have we gotten 
completely absorbed in our own lives, in our own worlds, thinking that they are all that they are, that they are all that matter. If that is the way it is with us, Jesus gives us a warning. We're going to be caught, caught unexpectedly, like in a trap. For we who figure the way our worlds are now is the way they will always endure. When those worlds crumble, which they certainly do, what then will we have to cling to for hope? Jesus does not want us to be left in such hopelessness. He knows our worlds will come apart. But he also knows more is in store for he is coming. His reign, his justice, his peace will be fully established beyond the endings of all of our worlds, even the endings of our most dear worlds. So be alert. Stand, Jesus says. Lift up your heads. Live now, as one writer puts it, in a way that makes people say, ah, Ah, so that is how people are going to live when Christ comes, when righteousness takes over our world. Stand. So what does that standing look like? One person puts it this way. Standing means we do not need to save the world. Jesus will do that in Jesus' own good time. We don't have to save the world. Standing means... We can do our best to make the corner of the world in which we live a safer and more humane place because we labor in the confidence that Christ is coming and that his arrival will spell release and relief and redemption for all God's people. So we, by our action, can now point to that. For this reason... Even in the midst of the most daunting of times and when the fear of the unforeseen events assault us, we can stand up and raise our heads regardless of what we read in the paper or see on the TV or what happens in our families or in our church. We can stand up and raise our heads. So what does this look like? You know, I think it looks like building habitat houses in Charlotte now, even in the midst of economic uncertainty. I think it looks like tutoring struggling students at Billingsville School now, even as the future of public education is debated and is in flux and we don't know how it's going to come out. It looks like ending chronic homelessness in Charlotte now, even as proper treatment for those who are mentally ill has not been sorted out. It looks like providing a school in the Congo now, even as government and social structures falter. It looks like visiting the dying and singing psalms about life and hope to them now. It means attentiveness to those who are excluded and looks like there always will be attentiveness to the least among us now. Even as the worlds we love are coming apart, this is what Christ calls us to do. Stand. Bear witness to the way of the kingdom. Stand. There's a story of the Connecticut House of Representatives that happened on a bright day in May 1780. The delegates were able to do their work by natural light coming through the windows. But then something happened that nobody expected. Right in the middle of debate, there was an eclipse of the sun and everything turned to darkness. Now get the date, 1780. 
no prediction of what was going on. They couldn't tell by looking at the Weather Channel. Some legislators thought it was the end of the world. A clamor arose. Some wanted to adjourn. Some wanted to pray. But the Speaker of the House had a different idea. We are all alarmed by the darkness, he said. And some of us are afraid. But the day of the Lord is either approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no cause for adjournment. If the Lord is returning, I, for one, choose to be found doing my duty. I therefore ask that candles be brought. When all the worlds we know are coming apart, let us ask for candles to be brought. Stand up, raise your heads, Jesus bids, for he is coming to finish his work. Thanks be to God.